it's a pretty nice way to live. <laughs> being connected with the seasons and being connected with the land, it's um, and, and growing food for people is a pretty important job. This is The Producers. I'm Anthony Huckstep. After growing up on a sheep and cattle property, Jackie Hinchy headed to the city to build a career. But the strong connection to the land drew her back, and now she supplies salad leaves to the community and some of Queensland's best chefs too. Well, we're only an hour from Brisbane, which is really nice because we've got access to, uh, I'm not too sure how many people, but it's a really nice big market. And um, we've gone 30 acres at Ocean View. So, you know, the market garden is very small. Um, it's only 200 square metres um, in Moreton Bay. Such a non-brittle, generous climate. You know, this year I think we're going over two metres of rain for the year, but even in a dry year, uh, we have really uh, regular moisture and uh, no frosts where we are. Um, really nice climate for growing sensitive crops. With more salad leaves than her family could eat, Jackie started to share her salad mix with local families. Blue Dog Farm came about because we have a very loud blue dog um, who thinks that she actually owns the farm. She thinks it's Blue Dog's farm, but she can't read and write because she's really not that bright. Um, it's, it started as, uh, as you know, as a family garden, and fortunately, we're really close to a main tourist road, Mount Me Road, that goes over the top of Mount Me. And I just started putting, you know, a few extra things out on a table at the front gate. And the Sunday drivers um, would stop and and buy a few chilies and tamarillos, and it really just started from there. So, um, you know, I was a stay-at-home mum and. Um, fiddled around in my garden all day, not doing any housework, and ended up where we are now. Though she grew up on a cattle and sheep farm, Jackie didn't grow up in a family that grew its own food. I was never introduced to growing uh, <laughs> by my mum, that's for sure. We, um, I grew up at Kunnamulla in southwestern Queensland, and you know we were... Um, primarily wool and cattle producers, but we had really bad bore water for growing a garden. So I never saw um, any growing when I was was a child. All of our food came from um, the Lockyer Valley on a train. Once I left home, went, went to boarding school, left home and ventured out into the world, I was fairly dismayed at the, um, the disconnection that that people had with their food and always had, you know, at least my herbs growing in pots on balconies and really just loved poking around in the garden for recreation. Um, you know, living in a, in a lot of flats and, and suburban uh, rental properties and enjoyed growing our own herbs and sweet potatoes and pineapples and the things that were easy to grow. Um, I actually had always wanted to enjoy uh, showing my kids where their food came from. So that was the primary motivation, I think. Finding it hard to make ends meet growing one or two specific crops, Jackie got inventive in the garden. So I, I didn't enjoy growing crops that were for uh, restaurants that were, you know, just one crop. Um, I found it very difficult to manage sales and inventory um, and, and there was a lot of wastage. So I just started uh, throwing all of the individual crops into one ready-to-eat salad. Um, and we've just tweaked it over the years so that now um, we've got a, a consumable that people are purchasing every week. Um, they don't need to buy their salad and their microgreens and um, kale in separate bundles. Um, they just get the whole lot in the bag from me. Initially, um, it was crops that, were, that did better in uh, cool weather. Uh, we don't have frost here and 
in summer we have quite a bit of humidity, so cool weather is a, a nice time to get those really primo uh, kale, mizuna, and lettuces that um, can handle the um, the cool weather. Look. It really is just really fancy salad. So up to 14 different crops, and that includes some of those wonderful perennials like pigweed and cranberry hibiscus, uh, red vein sorrel and uh, sheep sorrel, all of those um, in combination with the the main crops, the the, uh, mazuna, kale, beet greens, lettuce, red elk mustard and the microgreens, and flowers and any herbs, chives, etc., all go into this this one bag. So it's um, it changes every week. It's seasonal. With such a specific product, Jackie has a very well organised system to ensure there is no wastage. Typical day on the farm: Mondays and Fridays are um, a harvest day, so we um, we start at about six because we like to get. Uh, things out of the ground before they they wilt. Um, I have two boys who come and and work here. For my 50th birthday, I gave myself the gift of not having to um, harvest and turn in beds anymore. So they do that for me. Uh, And that's followed by uh, a mad run from here at Ocean View down to the city to get all of those deliveries into the kitchens. So Half of what we grow here goes uh, direct to consumer and the other half goes to restaurants in Brisbane City. I love, I love getting into those kitchens and meeting the apprentices and telling them what's been happening on the farm, telling them about how the aphids are getting into the crops but how we don't put any chemicals on the crops to save them. We just sacrifice some of the beds. Telling them uh, about... What, what the weather has been like. Jackie has formed some incredible bonds with well-known chefs and apprentices alike. Well, Alistair McLeod has these Sanford harvest dinners three times a year where he showcases local Moreton Bay and Brisbane produce. And I tell you what, it is a delight to stand up and speak about Blue Dog Farm really fancy salad and what's going on with the seasons and development of the farm with all of these locals who want to come and have the experience. That's great. But dining out in the restaurants and uh, experiencing what chefs do with the product is really special as well. And I love seeing the look on chefs' faces um, when they come out to tell us to tell us how they use it, what they enjoy about it. It fills my heart up, I tell you. When the pandemic forced everyone to pivot, Jackie went to the digital world to connect with customers. Reiko is uh, a cross between a farmer's market, Tinder and a McDonald's (laughs) drive-thru. So when the big first lockdown happened, know there there was a lot of pivoting going on and one of those pivots for us was to introduce Reiko from Scandinavia and it really is it's just a Facebook group uh, for each locality so we have got uh, about eight of them uh, in towns and suburbs around Brisbane and local producers post uh, what they have available so in Blue Dog Farms case it's you know bags of really fancy salad and uh, we put our, our bank details up there and the customers comment to order and say that they'd like two bags, please. And they pop the money directly into my bank account. And then they drive through a car park at a designated place, like a, a primary school, uh, at a designated time for one hour. And we, all the vendors, are lined up and we just poke their goodies through their back window as they drive through. It's it's great. We we get to meet all of our customers, and we know their, you know, who their kids are, and and uh, they get to know us too. Salad isn't the only thing Jackie produces, and her next step will bring a protein to market. What is next? I think that next will be expanding. Uh, 
direct to consumer beef options. Um, I'm not doing anything unusual there, but I do have access to land that I can lease to grow more cattle. And that's something that is second nature to me. And it's a nice way to be able to utilize the rest of our land. Um, I'd really love to be able to put more time into growing Reiko too, because I believe that throughout rural and regional Australia, there are ideas that are just tiny sparks in people's minds of opportunities that they'd like to explore with local food production. So uh, whether it be homeschooled children wanting to do a project uh, supplying their community with food or someone that is um, thinking of, of going full tilt into having a market garden, an orchard or protein production. It's nice for them to have a, a market stream set up for them. So I'd love to expand that. It's not just about connecting to the land or the amazing connections Jackie has forged with chefs. Something wonderful is at play here. I never saw this coming. I, I, uh, I've fallen into it. And it's, uh, it's a very grounded way to, to live my life. Um, I have learned to be very nimble and responsive. This is, you know, responsive to the weather and market changes. Um, but it's really nice just to be a conduit. You know, I, I don't pretend that my very small uh, input onto tables really has a big effect, but my ability to be able to be a conduit, to be a voice for small-scale producers uh, to explain what they're doing and to really attract the attention of consumers has been a, an impact that I didn't expect. Just seeing the interest in people's faces when they learn about how small the market garden is, when they uh, come, and, come to the farm and see all of the, the variety and the crops that I'm growing. But, you know, it's equally... When people have been to Reiko and they post a photo on Facebook of the haul of all the different items, you know, the, the couture chocolate and the sourdough bread and the kefir and the eggs and the, the lamb and the pork, all uh, displayed on their kitchen bench. And they're so proud of having been able to source it locally. It brings me a lot of happiness. It's a pretty nice way to live. <laughs> Yeah, I just being connected with the seasons and being connected with the land. It's um and, and growing food for people. It's a pretty important job. Being a conduit between the land and people's nutrition and diet has enabled Jackie to not only live a fulfilled life but enhance many others too. This is The Producers, a Deep in the Weeds production. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of producers, farmers, makers and growers, the true lifeblood of the food industry. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or email us at producerspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au.